So most solutions will change pH significantly if you add acid or add base. The presence of a buffer resists the pH change. So a buffer contains significant amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. If you just have the weak acid or the weak base alone, you won't have enough of the conjugate in order for it to act as a buffer. So here's an example of making a buffer solution. We're adding a weak acid here. This is acetic acid. And we know that acetic acid will partially ionize in solution and form some acetate ions. But it doesn't form very many. It does it a little bit. So in order to get a higher concentration of that conjugate base, we're going to add something like the sodium acetate. Sodium here is just a counter ion for the ionic compound. It could be potassium or lots of other things. But we're interested in the carbonate. So now what we have in this buffer solution is we have significant amounts of the acetic acid and the acetate. You'll also have sodium ions and hydronium ions present. So let's see if we can identify which of these is a buffer. Um, the concentrations of all of these are the same, so we don't have to worry about that being the thing that we're looking at. Here we've got nit nitrous acid and hydrochloric acid, nitric acid and sodium nitrate, nitrous acid and sodium chloride, or nitrous acid and sodium nitrite. What are we looking for? We're looking for a weak acid and its conjugate base. So they're listing an acid first. Are all of these weak acids? No. Nitric acid is a strong acid, so that one's not going to work. The rest of these are all nitrous acid, a weak acid, because it's not on the list, right? So here's nitrous acid. What's the conjugate base of nitrous acid? Well, you can write the ionization equation. It's going to lose a hydrogen ion. nitrite ion. So we're looking for a compound that has nitrite ion. So that would be letter D, right? So this is sodium nitrite, a soluble ionic compound. Ionic compounds dissociate completely in solution. So this is the formula for the compound. We have to remember that ionic compounds, when they dissolve, they separate into cations and anions. So when we're looking at this, we have to kind of think of it as the two pieces. When it dissolves, it's going to separate into sodium ions and nitrite ions, and that's the ion that we need. We would have to add it as sodium nitrite or potassium nitrite because you can't have a solution of a negative ion. Nature really doesn't like when charges get separated. That's what causes lightning, right? Is the rebalancing of charge, and it's very violent and can kill you, right? Nature wants the charge to be neutral, and so we have to have a counter ion. And so that's all that the sodium is. Any have, anybody have any questions? So let's look at a solution that starts out with 0.1 molar acetic acid 
at 0.1 molar sodium acetate. So let's just review nomenclature rules very quickly here. So acetic acid, this ic, that comes from acetate. Okay, nitrous acid, the us gets changed to ite, that's nitrite ion. So acetic acid and sodium acetate, this is a weak acid in its conjugate base. We don't care about the sodium. It's just, you know, acetate had to bring someone to the party, so she grabbed this guy and then she's going to ditch him as soon as they get in. I don't know why that's so satisfying to erase like that. So here we have the ionization reaction for acetic acid. Acetic acid reacting with water. This will donate a proton hydrogen ion to the water forming hydronium ion and acetate ion. And we could predict stuff knowing the acid ionization constant for acetic acid. But if we throw in extra acetate, that's going to cause the equilibrium here to be shifted towards the left. Less of the acetic acid is going to ionize than if we did not add sodium acetate. Because less of this ionizes, the solution is going to be at a closer to normal pH, closer to neutral, I should say. It will be less acidic than if we didn't have the acetate in there. And this is known as the common ion effect. When you have a weak acid and you add a common ion, the ionization will be less. If you have a weak base and you add the common ion, the yeah, ionization will be less. So let's calculate the pH of a buffer solution that's 0.2 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar sodium carbonate, and we're given the acid ionization constant. So we want to write the equation for the ionization of acetic acid. About HC2H3O2. And we're going to do the short way by not showing the water in there. Gives us hydrogen ion and C2H3O2. Can't say other words while I do that. And acetate ion. This is an equilibrium. We have an equilibrium constant. We're going to make an ice table. Oh, big surprise. Yeah, they're in this chapter too. So this is the initial concentration of acetic acid. So that's 0 0.200. NaC2H3O2, what does that separate into in solution? Sodium ions and acetate ions, right? It separates completely. So if it's 0.1 molar sodium acetate, that means that the acetate concentration would be 0.1 molar. And what would the initial concentration of hydrogen ion be? Approximately zero. 10 to the minus seven, pardon me. Okay, so is this equilibrium gonna shift to the right or to the left? This being essentially zero leaves no doubt. It cannot shift to the left because this can't get lower. It's gonna to shift to the right. So the change for acetic acid will be minus X, change for hydrogen ion plus X, and the change for acetate ion plus X. We don't have any 2x or anything because all of our coefficients are 1s. 
So down here I get 0 0.20200 minus x, and I get x, and this is 0 0.100 plus x. So Ka is equal to hydrogen ion concentration times acetate ion concentration. divided by the acetic acid concentration at equilibrium. Well, that's what these guys are. So we have x times the quantity 0 0.100 plus x. And we have down here, oops, we have 0 0.200 minus x, and that is equal to the given acid ionization constant, Ka. So we can choose to solve this using a solver or trying the x is small approximation and then checking to make sure that it's valid. I did bring my calculator tonight. I'm going to show you the x is small, which, you know, has a good chance of, of working because 0.2 and 0.1 are fairly decent concentrations. 10 to the minus 5, fairly small. So this x, oh, that's a different color. That x goes to 0. This x goes to 0. And so my x will equal 0 0.200 times 1.8 times 10 minus 5 divided by 0 0.100. That's just algebra. Point six times ten to the minus five. So to check for the x is small validity, I want to take this one and I'm going to compare it to the smaller of these numbers. It's going to be a larger percentage of 0.1 than of 0.2. So I'm going to compare it to 0.1. I'll take that number and divide by 0.1 and multiply by 100. It's 0.036%, no problem. X is small, it's fine. So then, pH is the negative log of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, because of the two sig figs in our Ka, this should have two sig figs, which means I should keep two decimal places in the pH, 4.44. Okay. Any questions? This is very similar to some things we did on, on Monday night. Four point four four. Good. So we can derive an equation that relates the pH of a buffer solution to the initial concentrations of the buffer components. So we don't actually have to make an ice table all the time. Okay, I hope I can do this. So 
if I call this initial concentration, and this is the initial concentration of A minus, so I'm making an ice table so that we don't have to later. And this would be approximately zero. This is minus x, this is plus x, and this is plus x. So we have the concentration of HA initial minus x, that's x, this is A minus initial plus x. So Ka is going to equal x times a minus plus x, save that one, divided by h a i minus x. We're going to use the x's small approximation. I didn't even really know why I had that color. It's kind of a weird color. So that goes to zero, and this goes to zero. We're looking for the pH, right? So I want to get x by itself. So I'm going to move this guy up there. Actually, first, I'm going to move the whole thing over. Come on. Give me a little more room. from so I'm going to move that up here and I'm going to move this down there This is the hydrogen ion concentration, so I need to do the negative log of x. That means I need to do the negative log of both sides. Let's see if this works. Well, close enough. It's off in the corner, but it's okay. So we're going to take the negative log of both sides. So I've got the negative log of this mess over here. I'm going to just drop the eyes. We'll just remember that that what that is what that is. And negative log of x. X was the hydrogen ion concentration. I probably should have written it that way. So what this is is the pH. So that's the pH. When you take the log of things that are multiplied, that's the same as adding the log of the things separately. Right? So we can look at this as the log of HA over I, A minus plus the log of HA. So 
So there's that negative in there. I'm going to distribute the negative sign. So we'll get rid of this and this, and this then becomes a negative sign. Right? The negative log of Ka is what? PKA, right? And, and that's a positive thing. So I could put that first, pKa minus the log of HA over A minus. But when, when we look at equilibrium constants, it's always the product over the reactant, right? And here we're talking about an acid and this would be the reactant, and that would be the product, right? So that's going to be kind of upside down and hard to remember. So if I change this negative sign, which we don't like those anyway, if I change that to a positive, I can do that by inverting this. of the buffer solution is equal to pKa plus the log of the initial concentration of the weak base, I mean the, the conjugate base, divided by the original concentration of the weak acid. Now the good news is I'm not going to make you derive that. But I think it's helpful to see how it's not something magical. It's just, you know, instead of doing essentially this process every time we need a pH, we can have this equation and just plug stuff in. And it's a lot easier. And this is called the henderson hasselbalch equation. Hasselbalch always reminds me of David Hasselbeck, but it's Castle Bulch. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, Hasselhoff, yes. Thank you. Uh, I never did actually watch that show. So, Henderson Hasselhoff equation pKa plus log of the base concentration over the acid concentration. And this works as long as the excess small approximation is valid. So we need initial concentrations that are not too small. And we need K to be fairly small. We want the acid and base concentration to be larger than about 100 to 1,000 times Ka. You, you don't actually need to, like, memorize that. The equilibrium approach is always valid. So if you forget the equation, you can just make an ice table and figure it out. Okay? So... Calculate the pH of a buffer solution that's 0.250 molar in HCN and 0.170 molar in KCN. We're given the Ka for HCN, and they're also telling us what the pKa is. Use both the equilibrium approach and the henderson hasselbalch approach. So this KCN, 
that's an ionic compound. Potassium is the cation, cyanide is the anion. That anion is the same anion that HCN makes when it ionizes, so the common ion. This is the conjugate base of that weak acid. So we'll do the um, equilibrium approach first. Initial concentration of HCN, hydrocyanic acid, 0 0.250. Initial concentration of cyanide, 0 0.170. Initial concentration of hydrogen ion, zero. At minus x, x, and plus x. Is that a small Ka? Yeah. Are these relatively large concentrations? Yes, they are. X is small is probably going to work here. It's going to work most of the time. So that goes to zero. This goes to zero. So x equals 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10 times 0 0.250 divided by 0 0.170. that number? Okay. I've got the full thing in my calculator. Instead of clearing it and typing in this rounded version, I'm just going to use what's in there to calculate the pH. Negative log, go up and catch that baby. 9.14 So henderson hasselbalch pH is equal to the pKa plus the log of the base divided by the log of the acid. I mean, you know what I mean. The log of the base of the acid. So this is our acid concentration, and this is the base concentration. And they give us um, pKa, so 9.31 plus the log of 0 0.170 divided by 0 0.250. Any questions? This this went faster, didn't it? We got the same answer. So I, I think 
you know, if, if the concentrations are like 0, 0.00 something, it's definitely small. Um, you can always do the calculation here and then check. And it, it's a little harder than when we were over here, but I can find the hydrogen ion concentration of that and divide by this and see if it's valid or not. I don't know. Um, we need to know how to do this process because it shows up all over the place and it's not going away. The ice is t the ice table. No. A lot of them will be x is small because if you don't have a solver on your calculator and x isn't small, it's a mess. It's a mess. Any other questions? Nine point one four. Calculating pH changes in a buffer solution. So buffers resist change in pH, but it does change a little bit. So if we want to know what's the pH going to change to if we add this to this buffer, we're going to make this into two parts. There's a stoichiometry calculation to calculate how the addition changes the relative amounts of acid and base. And then we do the equilibrium calculation to calculate the new pH. So that's where we can use the henderson hoxha equation. I think this should have been before the previous slide, but whatever. A buffer contains a weak acid, HA, and its conjugate base, A minus. The weak acid has a pKa of 4.82, and the buffer has a pH of 4.25. Which statement is true of the relative concentrations of the weak acid and conjugate base in the buffer? And they're just asking us, is the acid greater than the base? Is the acid less than the base? Or is the acid equal to the base? So if we think about that equation, the pH is 4.25. The pKa is 4.82. So 4.82 here, are, does this number need to be positive or negative? to get it down to 4.25. It needs to be negative. So this fraction then needs to be less than 1. So the base has to be smaller than the acid. Does that make sense? And if you, you know, I don't remember what makes a negative log. Well, try a couple of numbers. Take the log, turn your calculator on first. Take the log of 100. It's 2. Take the log of 0 0.0005. Negative 3.3. Okay, small number, negative log. So this needs to be less than 1 to make this negative so that we can reduce this down to the state of pH. And to get that, we have the base concentration being less than the acid. Okay, so back to what we were talking about. We're going to have a stoichiometry calculation and an equilibrium calculation. So here we're looking at an example where we have one liter of buffer 
and it's 0.1 molar both in the acid and the conjugate base. Calculate the pH after adding 0 0.025 moles of strong acid. So we need to find out how adding that acid changes the relative amounts of HA and A minus. So the way that the book sets this up, I sometimes call it a ba table, like sheep, right? I don't necessarily really like their table, but they keep using it, so I guess we're going to have to live with it. So here, this is what we're adding. We're adding strong acid. The anion of the strong acid doesn't matter because it ionizes completely. The concentration of hydronium ion is the same as the concentration of the strong acid. So if we add um, 0 0.025 moles of strong acid, we'll have 0 0.025 moles of hydrogen ion. So initially, this is 0. Initially, the base concentration was 0.1 molar times 1 liter. These are mole amounts. We can't do this part in molarity. The biggest reason is when you add something to the solution, the volume changes. And then the concentrations change. So we have to do this in moles. So here they're making it easy on us because one liter. And so the concentration of the acid initially, not the concentration, the number of moles is 0.1. So what's going to happen here? Well, a reaction is going to happen. We're adding 0 0.025 moles. And that can react with some of this, right, to form more of that. And this is where I, I just really don't like this table. We're going to assume, because there's an error, you know, just single error here. We're going to assume that all of this reacts with this number of moles. This is smaller, so this is the limiting reactant. All of this is going to react, leaving us with zero. When 0.025 moles reacts with 0.1, we lose 0.025 moles, and we end up with 0.075 moles. And over here, we gain 0.025 moles, so our new amount is 0.125 moles. Any questions? I don't think this is the best way to think about it. I find these tables confusing myself. I think, I think it would be easier, let's do this. No, I didn't want to do that. So we know that we're starting out with 0.1 moles of that and 0.1 moles of this, and then we're going to add 0 0.025 moles of that. When the reaction goes, what are we going to end up with? Here, we're assuming that it's going to go to completion, and then we're going to work the equilibrium back, is basically what we're doing. So I have 0 0.025 moles of this and 0.1 mole of that. So all of this is going to react. So I'm going to lose 0 0.025 moles of that. I'm going to lose 0 0.025 moles of this. And I'm going to gain 0 0.025. five moles of that. So this ends up being zero. This ends up being point zero seven five. And this ends up being point 
one, two, five. Is that easier to understand? Yeah. So now that we have these molar amounts, you know, amounts of moles, we can divide by the solution volume to get the molarity. We have to use molarity for the equilibrium. So here, we're adding a small amount of strong acid. So I believe what they're assuming is you've got a liter of buffer, and if I add like half a milliliter of strong acid, that's not going to significantly change the volume. Right? So they're saying, well, the volume is still one liter. So this is our initial concentration of HA. This is zero, and this is A minus. These are the values converted to molarities that we just got from the stoichiometry problem. We need to write it like this. H goes to H3O plus plus A minus because that's what works with Ka. You can't do it backwards. So this is going to be minus X plus X and plus X. So we've got 0.125 minus X. We get X and 0.025 plus X. So we can work that using an equilibrium approach or we can use the henderson hasselbalch equation. So if we're adding a small amount of strong base to the buffer, we have the exact opposite, which is opposite, but it's like really, really the same too. So hydroxide is going to react with our acid to form water and the A minus. Let's see if I can. So adding 0.025 moles of hydroxide, this is going to change, it's all going to react. This is all going to react, that hydroxide is the limiting reactant. So when all of it reacts, it's going to react with an equal number of moles of this guy and is going to form the same number of moles over here. So then we end up with 0 and 0 0.075 and 0.125. Adding the base, the A minus concentration has gone up. When we added the acid, the HA concentration went up. So the pH is going to change in a different direction. Any question? Uh -huh. We always assume that the creation of water and the neutralization is inevitable. Yes. Yeah. The um, the molarity of water is 55 moles per liter. So if you're making 0.1 moles that's not really going to change anything. Yeah, it's a good question. So summary, if you add a little bit of strong acid to the buffer, you're going to react a stoichiometric amount of the base and change it into the conjugate acid. 
so you're creating acid. So the pH is going to decrease. Now, you know, that explanation is great, but you could also just say, well, if I add acid to something, the pH is going to go down, right? That's what's happening. It's just that the explanation in the middle is a little more complicated. If we add, I've offended the doceric glass. So if we add a small amount of base to the buffer, that's going to increase the pH. What's really happening is that the base is re reacting with the acid of the buffer, converting it to conjugate base. So there's more base in the solution and the pH goes up. So here we have an illustration of the initial buffer solution, equal concentrations of the acid and the conjugate base. If we add acid to this, it's going to react with the conjugate base. The base concentration goes down, the acid concentration goes up. If we add hydroxide, that's going to react with the acid of the buffer. That concentration will go down, and this concentration will go up. Don't those things at the bottom look a lot like dominoes? So looking at that figure 18.3, which of these images, A, B, or C, best represents the amount of hydroxide added to the buffer in part B of the figure. So this is adding one hydroxide or two hydroxides or three hydroxides. So we started out with four of the acid and four of the base. After we added that, what do we have? We have three of the acid. So it must be one hydroxide, this one hydroxide reacted with one of the acid molecules and the amount of conjugate base went up by one. Does that make sense? Calculate. Calculate the pH change in a buffer solution after the addition of a small amount of strong acid or base. We have a one liter solution of buffer that's 0.1 molar acetic acid and 0.1 molar, sorry, 0.1 moles. It's a one liter buffer that contains this many moles of sodium acetate. Because the initial concentrations are equal, the pH of the buffer is equal to the pKa because that plus log of base over acid term, the ratio is 1 and the log of 1 is 0. So pKa is equal to pH. Calculate the new pH after adding 0 0.015 moles of sodium hydroxide. So we're adding hydroxide. Is the hydroxide going to act, react with the acid or the conjugate base? It's going to react with the acid. And we're going to assume complete reaction. And that's going to form water. and acetate on it. So from the buffer, we had 0 0.100 moles of that and 0 0.100 moles of that. We're adding 0 0.015 moles of hydroxide.
so this is the quantities we have at the start of this reaction. What happens? Well, which, what's the limiting reaction? The hydroxide, because there's less of it. Right? So all of it's going to react. So that's all going to react, and we're going to end up with the zero. 0.015 moles of this will react with 0.015 moles of this, causing its constant, its amount to decrease by 0.015. I think that's right. And this is going to go up by the same number of moles. This is a one liter buffer, one liter of buffer. So if we divide this by one liter, we get 0.115 molar. So the molar amounts are the same as the molarity in this example. So 0 0.085 molar, this is the acid, right? And this is the base. So pH equals pKa, 4.74, plus the log of the acid, nope, the base over the acid. Is that the direction we expect it to change? Yeah. Adding a base, the pH should go up. Any questions? So there we were looking at a buffer that was a conjugate acid, I'm sorry, a weak acid in its conjugate base. We could also have a weak base in its conjugate acid. An example of that would be ammonia and ammonium chloride. The calculations here are similar, but the thing we have to watch out for is the henderson hasselbalch equation uses Ka. And they're going to give you KB because it's a base. So you have to calculate the pKa to use it in the equation. So pKa plus pKb is equal to 14. Just like pOH plus pH is equal to 14. And there will be a question trying to trick you about that on an exam. Another picture of a buffer forming. So here we've got ammonia, the base, and here we have ammonium chloride. Do we care about the chloride? No. It's just there because he had to bring someone with him so he could be neutral. So we've got ammonia molecules and ammonium molecules in here. So if we add acid, it can react with the ammonia. If we add base, it can react with the ammonium. 
Calculate the pH of one liter of a buffer solution. It's put five molar in NH3 and put two molar in NH4Cl when 0 0.01 moles of solid sodium hydroxide is added. So a one liter buffer and we're adding 0 0.010 moles of solid, tiny amount. So we're assuming here that the volumes aren't changing. And then they, hmm, I almost killed the computer again. Um, they give us KB. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at what are we adding. So we're adding hydroxide. So we're adding hydroxide to the buffer. And is that going to react with NH3 or NH4 plus? NH4 plus. So this is going to act as an acid and donate a hydrogen to the hydroxide, making water and ammonia. So in our buffer, um, one liter of 0.5 molar, so that means there's 0.5 moles of the ammonia. 0.2 moles per liter times 1 liter, 0.2 moles of this ammonium ion. And then to that, we're adding 0 0.010 moles of hydroxide. So we're going to look at this as a limiting reactant problem. This is the smallest. All of that's going to react, and we're going to end up with zero, essentially. And so that's going to react with this guy, and we're going to get 0 0.019. And then we're going to gain the same number of moles over here, 0 0.51. questions? Down with bah tables. Sheep are taking back their pasture or something. You know. So this is the amount of moles. What's the volume? It's one liter. So that many moles, that's not what I meant to do. That many moles divided by one liter is 0.19 molar. This divided by one liter is 0.51 molar. There are times when the volume is not a liter. So we can't just like skip over that because it's going to get us later. This is the acid or the base? That's the acid. So, you know, probably a good idea to just like label them. So that's the acid and the base. The pH equals the pKa plus the log of base over acid. This is the pKb. The pKa equals 14 minus the pKb. Nine point two five. So this is equal to nine point two five plus the log of the base over the acid.
getting 9.6788, which rounds up to 9.68. Yes? Pardon me? What would happen if a different reactant? So if we add more of this than we have of that, yeah, so that's going to overwhelm the buffer. And I wouldn't use the henderson hasselbalch equation at that point because after that reaction occurs, you don't have a buffer anymore. But you can use an equilibrium calculation to find the pH. We're not going to do that regularly. Good question. Anybody else have questions?